Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am here today in, I guess we'll call this Luth Crunch. Uh, I was gonna be filming at another gym for you today, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, they have like a cinema in their cardio room so that you can watch TV. But uh, when we got there, they were like, oh, you know, we've actually changed our policy and we're not uh, allowing anybody to film anymore. So I was like, no. So thankfully this is just a hop, skip and a jump away. It's actually my old stomping ground. I used to train here, I think probably all of 2018, 2019, 2020. So uh, it is like a little bit of nostalgia right now. But uh, today's workout, what are we gonna be doing? It is a mixed workout. So I'm actually taking multiple exercises from our brand new uh, glutes and shoulders uh, part two. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing all of the upper body exercises today. And there is a reason that I'm doing that. Um, so yesterday was actually my uh, second follow-up appointment with my hormone specialist. Um, so I had, uh, I guess, a bunch of different health issues. Uh, I was getting extremely fatigued. Uh, I just felt like I was a living soulless zombie. And uh, it turned out, after having all of my blood work done, uh, one of the key things that was extremely below normal was my testosterone. So this is after, I guess, almost 12 months of not having competed, eating a good amount of calories, uh, you know, nourishing my body pretty well, trying to reduce stress so that doesn't always happen. Uh, but my testosterone levels were at seven. So it was extremely low um, and I ended up going on hormone replacement therapy. Now, for anybody that has had that, um, I guess the insertion is a little pellet and it goes right in your butt. So I have a giant patch uh, covering my butt right now and you're not allowed to train glutes, no spa, no sauna. Um, and that will be like that for another couple of days. So my appointment was yesterday, which is a Friday. Today is Saturday and I'm not allowed to train my glutes or my lower body really. Anything that kind of puts stress uh, or pressure on the glute muscle until Monday. So that's kind of the reason that I'm doing just an upper body session today. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to show you probably five or six upper body uh, mobility um, exercises and some warm ups. Uh, to help you with your training. I know a lot of people know more about the lower body uh, mobility workouts that I've been doing and that I've showed you. So this hopefully is something a little bit new uh, that you can apply to your own training programs before getting started with your upper body workout. Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna do, you might have seen me do before. So it's just a T-spine rotation. Um, you can do this with or without a band. I'll show you one of the versions without the band and then one with the band. So, the one without the band, we're going to hop down onto all fours. And we're basically going to pop our hand on the back of our head. We're going to sit back and we're going to rotate. Ooh. And we're going to do this about probably 10 times per side. Okay, you're going to switch sides. So then 10 reps on the other side. So again, just placing that hand at the back of your head, sit back on your heels. And rotate. So you notice that I'm just bringing my body, my hand back forwards. I brought that back in closer to me. Don't do that. So when you're in this all four position and you sit back, you actually want to keep your hand there. To give you more of a stretch. Okay, so that's the two final rotation without any equipment. If you've got a band, this one's probably a little better in my opinion, only because I'm quite flexible uh, and it applies a bit more resistance. So you'll have seen me kind of scoop it over my shoulder. <laughs> it looks a little bit weird. So you can see how the, the band is now on my back. I'm gonna walk myself out so that there's nice, a nice amount of tension. Woo. And that, my friends, is a good stretch. <laughs> come through. You're trying to get a lot of flexion in the spine here. Big opener. Coming right under. All right, swap sides. So again, just make sure you've got plenty of tension on that band so that you've got a, a good amount of resistance when you ooh, rotate. <laughs> Again, notice how I'm really trying 
to get into a spinal flexion position. So almost like kyphosis when I come under here. So see me arching my back. Next exercise, do they have a pipe? I bet you they don't. Ah! <laughs> I had a really good one I wanted to show you. Okay, we'll scrap that. We're gonna do child's pose. So you're going to come back on your feet. So again, hands out. Come back and we're again, we're really trying to focus on rounding the spine here. Lots of flexion. And if you want to isolate one side, we're just going to walk the hands to the other side. Ooh. I can really feel that through my lats. The thoughts in our heads Even things up. Never feel the same again Cause I've always been wrong from the start have a long list for you today. Okay, so this, this is a lat stretch. And you can do this either bench supported or on the floor, but they are called swimmers. So we're gonna hop down onto the floor. We're gonna start with our palms facing up. Forehead kind of just touching, say that without my head on the ground, forehead touching the ground. And then we're going to bring our hands around. And we're going to repeat that for 10 reps. Next, we have our either, we could do this with a PVC pipe or I'm gonna do it with bands today because I have one, but a band pass over. So, taking your band at a width that you know <laughs> you can do this with, but that is a really nice opener. I feel that through the chest, I feel that through my lats, I can feel that through my shoulder girdle. So I'm gonna do 10 reps at this width. And then as I can feel that starting to loosen up a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little bit narrower. Okay, so that's our PVC or banded uh, passovers. And then the next one is our banded pull apart. So for those of you that are familiar with the loop bands, this is the, thick, the thickness that I am currently using. There's a smaller one that's a little bit thinner. I would probably recommend using that. Do I have it in my bag? <laughs> Let's see. I do, woohoo. Okay, this is brand new. It's gonna be sticky. All right, so starting up here, suppressing the lats. So again, shoulder blades are pressed back and down. Starting up high. I wish I didn't have to write a song. These fingernails. Yow! Good for absolutely nothing. Awesome. So I would repeat this two times through, about 10 reps per side for any of the single arm movements, 20 reps for something like the um, passovers, uh, and then 20 reps for the pull aparts. So that is basically my upper body workout for today. Well, the warm up component. So I'm gonna grab my phone, I'm gonna have a look at the exercises that we're doing today, and I have a feeling 
we're going to be starting with a floor <laughs> chest press but basically this is going to be back chest shoulders I don't do biceps and triceps at the moment, so it is exclusively those upper body muscle groups. And then I'm gonna finish off with one core exercise. So let's get started. Floor press. Nothing super magical about this. I feel like I said it with all exercises. Um, but because we are pressing from the floor, we're not going to get the same or quite the same range of motion that you would if you were on a bench. So what that does is it actually forces us to use a little bit more of our triceps. I know last time I did this, I was extremely sore <laughs> for the first couple of days after having done it. And it'll also been a little while since I've done anything tricep specific. Um, it also uh, really works your chest. <laughs> so you probably find um, if you are somebody that gets stuck at the bottom of your chest press or bench press, um, you may actually be able to lift a little bit more than you would be able to with this exercise because you're not having to take that exercise through the full range of motion. Um, so I'll probably be doing maybe five to 10 pounds more than what I might attempt if I was doing a normal full range chest press. So if you've got an injury or something like that, this might also be a good compromise just to try and see if it feels okay um, as opposed to doing that full uh, range of motion uh, bench press. So I usually uh, pop the dumbbells up on my knees and then I kind of rock back and extend up. I just did 10 reps. I probably could have done 20 easily. So this is really, really light. I'm not going to count that as a working set today. So I'm gonna go and grab something that's significantly heavier because I'm working to 10 uh, reps of 10 today. So right in that hypertrophy, moderate rep range. Uh, and I'm also doing, as you'll notice, just a slow three second, it's probably a little faster than that, but it's meant to be a three second tempo on that eccentric. And again, this is just increasing time under tension. Um, there's nothing special about slow tempo versus fast tempo. It's just me providing a bit of exercise diversity uh, so that I have an enjoyment and a motivation for my program. <laughs> All right, so this is a little heavier. If you have a training partner, you're lucky. <laughs> it makes it a little bit uh, easier to kind of hand these off if your weights are starting to get pretty challenging to like lift up. Um, I would normally take one up on my own and then have my partner hand me very carefully the other dumbbell. But today, we're just gonna suck it up buttercup. <laughs> and hopefully I don't squish myself. <clears throat> so up onto the knees. And I'm gonna brace my core on the way down. And throw those dumbbells up. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. So much tricep. <laughs> uh. All right. So I can definitely feel that so much more <laughs> through my tricep. And because it's slow tempo, they're just like. <laughs> so if you haven't tried these, Give them a go. Uh, I really enjoy them. I really love training chest as well. I think a lot of girls are like, oh, I don't need to train that, but it's a big muscle group. You can expend calories. If you're kind of getting tired of the same lower body exercises all the time, do some chest. You're not gonna get jacked and muscular <laughs> just by doing one or two uh, chest exercises, sorry. All right, I'm gonna go up. <laughs> I should have used my wraps. <laughs> okay. Take a little breather. <laughs> Whew. 
totally going to take that part again. That was, I was so distracted. <laughs> so one of the things that I probably overstated a little in previous videos is training volume. Um, and I've been a little bit more, I guess, contextual <laughs> when it comes to some of my educational videos of late. So I used to kind of talk about training in such a way that if you aren't resting and getting your heart rate completely back down to, you know, you're resting, then you're potentially limiting your ability to increase your training volume because you wouldn't be able to attempt the same load. Now, that is one way of achieving your goals. It's also one way that I prefer to train if I have the time. However, if you are somebody that is short on time and you don't wanna to have to spend hours and hours in the gym, then there's nothing wrong with moving through a little bit quicker. It may mean that your weight selection is compromised and thus your training volume is compromised a little bit. But as long as you are working close or near to failure, you are eliciting enough of that mechanical damage in the case where we're going heavy or those metabolic byproducts that are building up inside the muscle tissue and cells during uh, some of those hypertrophy, higher rep ranges, uh, or if you're working really quickly, uh, you'll experience the same kind of buildup of metabolites. Um, and that is enough to signal uh, muscle growth. So we can signal muscle growth through heavy load. We can signal muscle growth through buildup of metabolites uh, inside the cells as well. So, that's my preferred method is to go slow. I just, I think I've gone so hard for so many years that it was just refreshing for me to go, oh my God, I don't have to like be sweating and like dying and feeling like I need to have a nap after. So both can be really effective, um, you know, at hypertrophy. But that doesn't discount the importance of seeing progression over time. If you train like that, you know, the fast way with little rest between sets, but you, you don't ever see any improvements in your weight, it's probably that you're not going to make any hypertrophy um, progression. So you do want to see that kind of linear trend over time and obviously the more experience you get, it's going to start to plateau and it gets harder. Um, but both can be effective ways uh, to train. Just wanted to make that clear because I've always been very much, this is what I like to do. Um, so I kind of talk about what I do, but it's important to kind of give you that context as well. Okay, another exercise in today's program. Kneeling Smith Machine shoulder press. I've also got a mixed one and a half grip pull downs. Um, and those are the two next biggest muscle group. The rest of the exercises are probably more accessory isolation movements. So we've got like a front raise, a lateral raise, um, supine cable rope face pull. Uh, and then we've got a chest supported Y raise. So they're all smaller muscle groups. I'd consider those accessory. So the two that I've just mentioned to begin with, the kneeling Smith machine shoulder press and the mixed grip um, one and a half pull downs. They're the bigger muscle groups, so I'm gonna do those first while I've still got energy. <laughs> okay, wraps, any pulley movements, I'm always gonna have those out. Um, by the way, if grip strength is important to you, don't use grip wraps. <laughs> um, for me, I really don't have a strong interest necessarily in getting really, really strong grip. Though, depending on what my interests are, you know, if you're a rock climber <laughs> or, you know, you do something that requires, you know, grip strength, like even something like rowing um, or tennis where you do have to have, you know, some kind of um, endurance, then maybe consider not using racks. But if you're just in the gym for health purposes uh, and you're trying to build some muscle, which is obviously very protective from a health standpoint and for your longevity, I'd say get wraps. <laughs> so for this one and a half mixed grip cable pull down, I am doing sets of eight. And the reason it's only eight is because it takes a little bit of time to do the one and a half rep. So you'll never see me do anything like 12 or 15 with a one and a half exercise on any movement, whether it's legs or upper body, because it takes way too long. <laughs> but it wouldn't be an ineffective uh, approach. Okay, I will do a little warm up first. 
I'm going to start with a wide grit, which is a little bit more lat focused. Okay, so while I'm here, the one and a half is basically all the way down, halfway back up, back down, fully extend. So that's one rep. And I'm gonna do basically a little pause at that half point. Again, this is just another way to do time under tension because we're doing in the bottom rep range, where I guess isolating a little bit more when the muscle's in the shortened position or the flexed position. Um, and then I'm doing mixed grip because I don't necessarily want to develop my lats anymore, uh, but I don't want to become completely weak in my back either. <laughs> so I'm going to include some wide grip. I'm going to do a narrow grip uh, and then a, a close overhand grip as well. So just kind of slightly moving around where in my back um, the muscle is being um, uh, worked. I have no idea what this is going to be. <laughs> Start conservative. All right, what weight is that? 88, okay. down. I'm going to give a little bit of a breather. Um, next grip I'll move into the narrow overhand grip. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more rhomboids center of the back. Uh, probably a little bit more traps as well but I'm not going super heavy um, so I'm probably not going to build a whole lot of muscle <laughs> with my two exercises on my upper back. <sighs> Sorry. The last couple of weeks, I have hardly had an opportunity to train. <laughs> so we are planning something so exciting and I have been wanting to do this probably for 10 years. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much to give away, maybe because you guys are exclusive to YouTube. I can tell you and it's not gonna go crazy, but we are hosting a huge seminar in Vegas right around the time of World Championships for the WBFF. We have so far four confirmed speakers plus myself, you guys and ladies. <laughs> like all my crushes are there, all my favorite people. We've got more uh, conversations happening over the next couple of weeks with some other people that I have been a fan of for such a long time. Um, these are such empowering women um, and I honestly am like I can't sleep at night I'm so excited so we've been doing a lot of planning on the back end trying to find venues to accommodate a really large group of people plan out you know all of the little giveaways uh, all of the meals and things that we want to have you guys uh, enjoy while you're with us DJs audio technicians all of that stuff sorry yeah, my priorities are so far out of the gym at the moment, but I know for my health, I've still been trying to do that. Um, really, that is kind of what's motivating me at the moment, so. It's been, um, I, th I think a better sense of balance, not quite having so much pressure uh, to do so much activity. Um, and sure, I think I've probably put on a couple of kilograms, but uh, I feel like I've truly encompassed the idea that, you know, I am healthy. I am fit, I am strong. <laughs> um, and, you know, if I look at all of my blood work, with the exception of testosterone, which is really low, um, you know, I'm otherwise extremely healthy and happy more than anything. So, yeah, it does feel good. I kind of get excited now when I come back into the gym and train because I'm not in here every day. It's like, oh, what are we doing today? Like, you know, when you get those little nervous butterflies, if you've got to do like squats or deadlifts, <laughs> I still get that. <laughs> Close grip. Same thing again. 
We want to make sure that your spine stays really long. Try not to like lean back. Keep nice and tall, ribs kind of push down. Guys counting, I have a eight. Oh my god, my triceps. Wow. That definitely gets your underarm. Okay, switching up the attachment. These are so fatiguing, just the amount of time. It's tough. So don't load up what you would normally do for regular reps. I usually take it down by probably, I don't know, 15% roughly. So the close grip's going to be a lot more rhomboids uh, and traps. Of course, you're still using your lats, but to a lesser degree than you would if you were using, uh, sorry, you were doing a, a wide. So I kind of push up on my toes too, just to make sure that I'm really sitting into that position. Mm. Oh my word. <laughs> I'm going to enter in some weights here. Where are we? Mixed one and a half grip. So if you are a new follower, we have a training platform. It's called The Workout Builder. <laughs> uh, you can head over to the links that are in the description. Um, basically, there are 70 or so more programs uh, designed for beginners through to advanced lifters. Uh, you get the option of selecting whichever equipment that you have access to. I know a lot of people, uh, particularly during COVID, didn't have as much um, equipment uh, at hand. So we basically put together all of the exercises um, that train the same muscle group. So if you don't have a leg press or if you don't have a hack squat, you can go in and change the exercise uh, depending on what you have available. So it is $12.99 a month. Um, there are programs that are as short as four weeks. Uh, most of them are about 12 weeks in duration. And like I said, there's over 70 different options. Um, you can filter them based on being at home workouts or the gym. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. However, the most recent program that I have put together, unfortunately, we've had a bit of a snafu with the site. Uh, we're not putting anything on uh, for a little while, um, but I have uploaded it to my uh, website, which you can download, which is in a pretty user-friendly uh, spreadsheet, and it has all the same functionality that the Workout Builder does, except for being able to change out the exercises. So, if you want to get my latest program. You can go and download that for free um, from my website. Again, all those details are in the description. Okay, next up we have the Smith Machine Press. But is it free? <laughs> so we will move on. Though it's not my preference, um, we've got chest supported Y raise, um, and I'm going to superset that with a uh, front raise. So let's go and head over to the dumbbell area. Okay, chest supported Y raise. You can vary the angles um, of your bench depending on where you would like to target. <laughs> so the more prone you are, so the lower the bench, um, when you're doing that Y raise, the more of your rear delt you're going to use. The higher you are, the more of your medial and uh, front shoulder, uh, your anterior shoulder uh, muscle you will be using. So choose your preference. Uh, I'm probably going to go a little bit higher than this because uh, I have lots of other rear delt exercises uh, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so a little bit lighter than what I would use for a lateral raise. I'm not as strong uh, in this position, um, but you're just going to lean your chest, straighten out the legs, and then we're going to come up in a Y. Okay, stuck 
goes there. Pretty sure my next set is a 15. Front reins, yes, it is 15. How do I want to do these today? Ooh. I'm going to do something different. Take that down a couple of clicks so that was too lower than what I just had for my Y raise. I'm gonna get a, a bar for our front raise. All right, so I'm gonna lay down 15 reps. We're just taking it down and straight up. Super simple. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Super simple if I could lift the weight. <laughs> God dang it. This is what happens when you don't train your upper body. Okay, there's no lighter barbells over there, so I thought that might happen. I can't lift the 40, so I'm gonna do my 10s instead. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> Everybody's worst nightmare. <laughs> Let's try that again. Oh my goodness. It's kind of sad I used to be able to do that. Okay, I'm gonna take it up one more for my next set. Shoulders are toast. So, again, depending on what your areas of interest are, how many shoulder exercises that you include, how many different, I guess, areas of your shoulder you include, is truly up to you. <laughs> so, I typically try to program uh, symmetrically. Um, however, there was a period, I'm going to say a couple years ago now, where I really neglected my rear delts. Um, I don't know whether it was just me getting super excited about all the other shoulder exercises <laughs> that weren't rear delts, um, but I definitely had more noticeable hypertrophy here and here. So lately, I would say my programs have skewed a little bit more towards rear delts. So if anybody is wondering why does Holly do more rear delt exercises than she does, you know, anterior delt, um, that's kind of why. <laughs> um, but when you program, if you're planning to do uh, shoulders in your exercise, or maybe you sorry, in your program, and maybe that's part of your upper body session, I would start with either your back or your chest, whichever your preferences it are. So for men, typically they're more concerned about, you know, their chest, so they might start with their chest. Some dudes might also want to grow their back more. So you can start with your back and then you kind of move down to the smaller muscle groups. However, if shoulders are your primary goal for your upper body, start there. Um, when they're fresh, when they're feeling good, um, and that way uh, you'll be getting, I guess, the most quality sets on the muscle groups that you care about the most. So, yeah. Let's do that second set. <laughs>
think I might go up for that my last set. you didn't know if you ever see in any of my programs a T race or an I race or a Y I think you're probably going to guess where you take the dumbbell <laughs> so for a T you're coming straight out and then for the uh, Y which is obviously what we just did and for an I race you're going straight forwards <laughs> Because some of these I do not have uh, video demonstrations for on the Workout Builder uh, and I have not been able to record those videos since the last time I did a big overhaul of exercise. So hopefully I can do that again soon. Oh, I don't know if I regret that decision or not. <sighs> reps for that last set but that was pretty close to failure <laughs> sorry in the new training document that we have if it has prescribed a certain number of reps and you don't get that number of reps write down or put in the number that you did because it will automatically calculate your training volume for whatever you did because <laughs> it's looking at every single set and multiplying the set number times the reps times the weight that you lifted so yeah. Alright, I'm taking this back. <laughs> so up next is the overhead Smith machine press. So I'm going to be doing this from a kneeling position uh, as opposed to standing where you've got a little bit more support from the lower muscle groups. <laughs> um, so this kind of isolates your shoulders a little bit more. So if you are used to doing like a standing press um, where you are kind of using a bit of momentum and you know the lower body legs to support that drive up then you may not be quite as strong uh, in this particular movement. So lower or set up the weights uh, with that expectation. So I'm going to be doing uh, I have no idea what weight I'm going to start with today. I'm pretty sure I have a pyramid. So a 15, a 12, and then an eight. So this is now the third exercise with my shoulders. So they're feeling pretty warm. So I don't really need to do a whole lot of warming up. I'm probably just going to hit this for three reps and then move straight into my working set. rough for 15. <laughs> I feel like I might have only done that for 12 last time so I've got 40 on today for 15 so if I'm gonna do 12 for my next set I do need to go heavier but I'm going to be very conservative or it might end up back on my chest <laughs> so I'll grab the two and a half and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I remember we used to have to basically run around the whole gym <laughs> just to try and find these guys. <laughs> I think there was only like one pair in the whole gym once upon a time. 
obviously they've <laughs> added a good amount to their collection. shoulder exercise. This weight probably would not have been quite so crushing. I don't have any excuses for the attempt at the other front raise. That was just weakness. <laughs> we are also gearing up for our WBFF uh, team. So in just a couple of weeks we are going to be starting I guess the sign-up phase for World Championships. So if there's anybody that has wanted to get involved in WBFF uh, competitions, get on stage. Uh, now is the time to join. Um, our team and I are going to be taking a group of you to Vegas um, and you get to do all of the good stuff. There's some fun inclusions that we're kind of bringing in which aren't usually part of our coaching packages. But in addition to that, for the people that have always wanted to go on stage but they're not quite confident enough yet, uh, we are also doing, I guess, another program option where there's no obligation to get on stage. So you get the full experience, you get coached like you are, you know, competing and getting on stage. But at the end, we have a photo shoot lined up to kind of celebrate that hard work and all of your progress. Um, we'll do a team photo shoot as well. So all of the girls that are competing, uh, as well as those that are wanting to try this for the first time, uh, can get together to celebrate. It's going to be like the ultimate girls weekend getaway. <laughs> so I know I'm really excited. Uh, our team of girls that are going to be coaching are really excited. Um, and yeah, this is the first time that we've done this. So cannot wait. <laughs> All right, I suppose I should do this last set. All right, eight reps. you uh, a supine lying uh, rear delt face pull and a leg lower uh, but I am not gonna have time today uh, that is the reality of life I know you guys probably get caught up in the middle of an exercise uh, your program too uh, and you got a dash you got somewhere to be and I do I have a lunch to get to but it is not any old lunch it is actually going to be uh, a filmed lunch uh, I am heading down to a local restaurant here in Tampa called Ulele uh, and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make I guess healthy choices when you're ordering off a takeout menu or you're dining out um, I know for people that are new to tracking um, there's a lot of intimidation about those social settings uh, and it doesn't need to be you know worrisome um, you know me and my team are here to help you guys kind of ease that stress and that uh, I guess unease 
So that video is going to be coming out very soon on my YouTube channel. Uh, so stick around for that. And if you want to grab a copy of the free program uh, that I have done parts of today, uh, you can get that on my website. So you can head down to the description. You'll find all the links, how to get in touch with me, get in touch with my team, how to access our tracking app, how to access the Workout Builder platform and everything else that you need to know. Um, but until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and uh, I will see you at my next video. See ya.